Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our sins unto God, and prepare ourselves, that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us pause and make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto the Father, I will recite the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart that, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O oh God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life to improve and sanctify it that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the, East, the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my dear brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I had thought how I should like to treat you as sons and give you a pleasant land, a heritage, most beautiful among the nations. You would call me my father, I thought, and never cease following me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have entrusted us with the riches of faith, 
to be used to expand your kingdom here on earth. May we spend our days wisely investing these spiritual gifts for the increase of your kingdom on earth. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O merciful God, grant that we may hear your words with willing hearts and apply ourselves to fulfill them. May we progress toward perfection and after completing our earthly pilgrimage, may we be united with you in all eternity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. On this, the 33rd Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the Book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor, and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive, and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual for today. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much. And still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul, the apostle to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those servants <coughs> came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. The master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much. And still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. Words taken from the Gospel according to Luke. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's Gospel, we hear another parable of Jesus, the parable of the talents. Now as we look more closely to this parable, we realize that the man who is going on, on the journey is none other than Jesus. While, I, while our Lord was sharing the Passover with his apostles, we read in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 16, these words. A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. Now, we read that the disciples began to ask among themselves, what did the Lord mean when he said, a little while? 
As we near the close of the liturgical year of the church, we are again reminded of the return of the Lord, his second coming. This is a basic Christian belief as taught by the early church. The tone of the word of God reminds us to be prepared for this event. St. Paul reminds his readers of this event as found in the first letter to the church at Corinth. It should also be noted that in every chapter of the first and the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, they all end with a reference to the second coming of Jesus Christ. The second important part to the story is that before the man went on the journey, he entrusted his servants with his possessions each giving different amount of his possessions according to their abilities. Has not the Lord through the word of God entrusted us with the secret of his kingdom? In biblical understanding, a talent was a monetary unit weighing approximately 80 pounds depending upon the metal that was used. Some calculate that a talent, as used in the parables of Jesus, was equivalent to 20 years of wages for a common worker. Other biblical scholars have estimated the value of a silver talent, as used in the New Testament, to be valued between one and $3,000 again way beyond the means of the common laborer. To look at this in a different way in today's economy, if you assume that a day laborer makes about $20,000 a year, then one silver talent was worth about $400,000. would be valued of over $2.5 million. Five talents that was given to the first would have the equivalent, if it was silver, of approximately $2 million today. And that five talents, gold talents, would be worth approximately $12 million. Now the word talent can be looked at in a different way. In today's story, the man going on the journey gave different amounts of his possessions to his servants according to each of their abilities. To one, he gave five. To another, two. And to the third, one. When he returned the one, who received five talents doubled what was first given to him. The one who received two talents also doubled and gave it back to him. While the third servant who received but one instead of doubling it, buried it and gave back only what he first received. In the end, we learn that the Lord blessed those who increased their gifts, while the one who chose not to forfeited what was first given to him. My brothers and sisters, we hold to a faith that after the Lord was crucified and resurrected and prior to his ascension, he reminded again his apostles that he would send another helper, an advocate, a paraclete, who would help and teach them all things in truth, which the Lord first gave unto them. Now the same paraclete existed from the very beginning, whom we know as the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. He was known as the Elohim, the sevenfold spirit of God. 
El Ruach, which was the very breath of God. The same spirit was seen by John the Baptist following the descent upon Jesus, the Lamb of God, at his baptism. This divine spirit was sent to strengthen and sanctify the disciples unto the Lord and to edify his church. Now a church is his church and it is composed of a community of believers who rely upon the word of God and who work in the vineyard of the Lord. Paul speaks of the importance of this community of believers in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 4 through 7, where he describes that there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone and to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good in verse 11 we read all these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually as the spirit chooses st paul also tells the congregation at corinth that just as a body has many parts, and each is important, it is only in bringing all these parts together that one body is formed in Christ. In chapter 12, verse 27, we read, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. He continues, And God has appointed in the church, first apostles, then prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? My dear brothers and sisters, our blessed Lord has given each of us different talents to be used for the edifying of the church. We have all received his word. We have been given also the free will to either increase these talents depending upon his word or ignoring them but as we believe according to our faith and as we profess there will be a day of reckoning according to one's faith when the master will return and call upon all to make an accounting of their stewardship has this not been portrayed in the day of judgment where each man will have the book of life open and one will be examined of what they did, what they said, and what they thought while here on earth. Today in the Eastern Diocese of the Polish National Catholic Church, there are prayers that are also offered on this Word of God Sunday. And so, all of us who are called to labor in the Lord's vineyard, let us hear the voice of the Master who says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your Master's joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. But from willful sins, keep your servant. Let them never control me. Then shall I be blameless, innocent of grave sin. my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray Almighty God may we labor all day long for your love and strive all our lives for your kingdom grant that we who offer these gifts may always be faithful to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, O Heavenly Father, grant that this holy offering 
an expression of your activity through the incarnation of your word, Jesus Christ, regenerate us in spirit and awaken in us to a new life in you. All of this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his most holy ministry. And empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sanana in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. On this day, let us offer prayer for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, to all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us remember in our prayers this day all those who are unemployed, homeless, and hungry. Let us remember in prayer all abused and neglected children in our world and victims of violence. Let us remember in prayer also those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad and all of your presence, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and in honor of all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your holy name and for the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, 
draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so great for the whole human family, our Savior, took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty of your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and a chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, 
and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it unto everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you did say to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Do not look at, upon this, our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us peace and unity according to your holy will who livest and reignest forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, at this time, there are many of us who will not be able to receive sacramentally the body and blood of Christ. And so I offer this act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
according to your word, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, strengthened by this Holy Eucharist, may we persevere in faithful service, announcing your love and showing your compassion through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, as we have heard the word of God and have received the body and blood of your Son, may we be strengthened in spirit and become more zealous in your holy church as we follow the voice of your incarnate word, Jesus Christ. May we continue to build your kingdom here on earth. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence. And the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. and sisters, again I welcome you to the holy name of Jesus in South Deerfield. It is my thought and prayer that the holy mass that we offered might be a blessing for you and for your, your loved ones. And it is my prayer and the prayer of our congregation that the good Lord would continue to bless us, to watch over us with his holy angels, not only for us but for all our loved ones. May God be with us until we meet again. May the name of Jesus be praised now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 